Welcome to How It Works, a video series from Law Sites in which you get to see hands-on demonstrations of legal tech products directly from the developer. I'm Bob Ambrogi, and today's featured product is Woodpecker, AI-enabled legal document automation for solo and small firms. Joining me to tell us about it is founder and CEO, Alex Malahi. Alex, welcome to How It Works. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about Woodpecker and why you started it. Sure. So I originally built Woodpecker to uh, solve what I viewed as a ongoing and pervasive problem for solo and small law firms in terms of standardizing um, frequently used legal documents and then ultimately generating them uh, on the fly whenever they were needed. The existing solutions out there were outdated, super expensive, difficult to implement, and nothing was really Microsoft Word focused. So that's why we uh, we went all in on Woodpecker. And since then, folks have loved it. So uh, can you show us how it works? Let's do it. We'll hop right in. All right. So the way we think about document automation at Woodpecker is in two separate phases. The first phase is actually building a template out of an existing legal document. And the second phase is actually using that template. So what we're going to do first is actually build a template out of a basic engagement agreement that we have here with some dummy data. We launch Woodpecker alongside of the document in Word. And the first thing we're going to do is actually just start creating some fields or some variables for information in the document that's likely to change. So what I can do is create a field here. And the first thing I see is the date. So I'll do a simple field here called date. I'll make the type a date. I can choose the format to be any number of date formats, as well as optionally default it to today or sometime in the future. I'll go ahead and click save there, and I get my new date line item over here on the right. Now our goal is we're gonna build a couple of these fields over here on the right so we end up with a basic form that matches the document. The last piece here is I actually wanna insert this field into the document. And this is uh, one of the major differentiators between Woodpecker and other document automation solutions in that Woodpecker doesn't use placeholders. We basically just allow folks to actually insert a field directly into the document and Woodpecker keeps track of the location of that field for you automatically. So that's a drag and drop? It's essentially a selection of the text and then clicking on the plus one or plus zero button, which will automatically insert the field into the document, creates mm -hmm. a content control and keeps track of that location for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on to the next one and let's create a client first name field. We'll choose a single line of text here because that's just the simplest. We'll go ahead and click save. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll just click select client first name. We'll click on that plus zero button. It's gonna insert client first name there. Let's do it one more time for client last name, but this time we'll just duplicate this field. We'll say client last name, save it. And again, we'll select that client last name field here as well and click on the plus zero button. So at this point, we have a sort of basic understanding of creating fields for the document, assigning them to various locations in the document. We can get really fancy with drop downs, conditional logic, formula calculations, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of fancy stuff to automatically generate the document whenever we mm -hmm. need it. Um, we won't cover all of that today, um, but essentially this is the basic usage uh, of creating our template in the first phase in this, in this journey. Any questions on that, Bob? Just what, what if I'm uh, new to Woodpecker, but I've got some templates I've created using another document automation application. Is there any way to import those? That's a great question. Yeah, so we actually have developed what we call our auto template engine, um, which isn't viewable right now because I have my uh, three fields here uh, created. Mm -hmm. It would actually be viewable when I don't have any fields created. And what that does is it actually uses AI to analyze the document for placeholders that might have been created previously or any, let's say, common um, document automation placeholders uh, that exist with other solutions, right? So for example, if you have a bunch of templates that are being used with another solution, you can actually feed them into Woodpecker and Woodpecker will analyze and catch all of those placeholders and create fields, Woodpecker fields out of those for you. Great. Thanks. Sure. So let's pretend that we, you know, we did some work, we created our template here. Um, maybe we set up some conditional logic for the salutation. Maybe we uh, inserted some conditional paragraphs here. Now, once this template is done, we want to do, um, we want to do something really important, which is actually save it to what we call the Woodpecker document collection. So what we're going to do now is save the template to the collection by clicking on this little floppy disk icon shortcut in the, in the header here. And what this does is it actually saves this template to a cloud-based storage drive, similar to, let's say, a Dropbox. And that template now is shared with everyone on my team. 
so everyone can now use this template either within Word or within our dashboard. Okay, and now that um, now that we've saved it to the collection, what we want to do next is actually look at the three different ways that a woodpecker template can be populated. So the first and simplest is actually just to open up the template in Word, just like we have it here, and just start filling out some of this information, right? So this might be John Smith, and I'm going to click on this populate button down here, and you'll see the data get inserted into each of the locations that we specify each of these fields. Now, if we had conditional logic, that would get evaluated for us. If we had formulas, those would get evaluated for us. If we were using the clause library, clauses would automatically get inserted for us in all the right places. Conditional logic meaning if then exactly. logic in the document, yeah. Exactly, yep, exactly. So you might say, if the client is in a certain state, insert this paragraph, otherwise mm -hmm. remove it, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions on that, Bob? Well, can I ask you a question on the uh, on, on adding the uh, template to the library? Uh, do you have versioning at all? If, if, if my associate comes in and makes changes to the template after I've created a template, uh, do I know that? How do I know I'm using the most recent version of a template? Great question. So the document collection here is um, there's some basic permissioning built in, there's some basic versioning built in, but essentially the idea is that when a template is uploaded to the collection, um, it's marked uh, for everyone else as um, who owns it, right? So for example, this folder right here is Helen's folder and it's marked as a shared folder, meaning I have the ability to download it, I have the ability to use those templates, but I don't have the ability to overwrite them, right? So mm -hmm. when I create uh, another template or if I upload a, an existing template to the collection, I'm, it's gonna ask me actually to keep this uh, as, a, as a separate template so that I don't overwrite the existing one. So the idea is that there's some basic permissioning built in, um, but that's actually something we're working on to, uh, to augment the permissioning around versioning and, and who can do what. Okay, great. So now that we've populated, uh, basically gone through the first uh, and simplest way of populating a template, which is again, just to fill out our form and click the populate button, there's a second way that we can actually populate multiple templates at the same time. And this is one of our major value adds, um, which is a difficult, difficult thing technically to do. But ultimately what this allows folks to do is, let's say I fill out this basic form here, and instead of clicking on populate, I can click this down arrow and select a populate multiple option. So I can populate or generate multiple templates at the same time, either as docx files or as PDFs. And if I select the docx option, what it's going to do is actually pull down my document collection so that I can see all of the templates that are available to be populated. So this is one of the major reasons to save a template to the collection is so that we can populate multiple of them at the same time, as well as share them with the rest of our team. So in this case, I might say, all right, well, for John Smith, in, in addition to generating the engagement letter for him, let's say that we want to generate a last will and testament for John Smith as well. So I'll click on that last will and testament. I can select one additional template. I could select 100 additional templates. It doesn't matter. And when I click on populate here, what Woodpecker is going to do is analyze both of these templates, and it's actually going to look for overlapping pieces of information. And so what we're seeing here is essentially non-overlapping pieces of information. So we can see that in that will, there's a client name field and there's a client state field. But in this template, there's actually a client first name, client last name, as well as a date. So it's just prompting us to make sure that we actually don't miss anything. Maybe I change the state to California. Client gender is male. Client marital status is single. Great. Now, once I populate these two templates, Woodpecker is going to evaluate, once again, any conditional logic, clauses, formula calculations, inserting all of the data that we've given it into all of the appropriate places in both templates. And then ultimately, I can actually download the final documents here, or I can share a link to those final documents. Is there a way any to view them before you download them? Uh, no, there's no there's no way to view them before you download them. Essentially, you just have to download them um, uh, either to your desktop like this or via a link. Mm -hmm. So if okay. we just take a look at what that looks like real quick, I can uh, download this file to my desktop, open up the zip folder, and take a look inside. And here are mm -hmm. my two documents. Here's okay. my engagement Great. agreement, and here's my last will and testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Great, that's really powerful. Yeah, and it becomes the more templates that you generate at once, the more powerful it becomes, the more time it saves you, the more accuracy you get ultimately. Yeah. All right, so the third way that Woodpecker templates can be populated um, is actually via our client-facing questionnaires. 
So if we go over to the menu here, the top line item here is called questionnaires. And if I click on that, it's actually gonna take me into our browser, right? And what this is doing is, is we're now outside of Word and we're actually in a web browser that um, is document agnostic, right? So we're essentially sitting on top of all of our templates and we can generate client facing questionnaires that essentially populate these templates when the questionnaire is submitted. So you'll notice I have a bunch of questionnaires that I've previously created, each with different numbers of responses, but let's create a, create a questionnaire real quick to see what this might look like. Again, we'll see the document collection, so we can select which templates we would like to be populated or generated when this questionnaire is submitted. Let's just say we want that engagement agreement as well as that will. We'll click generate. And now the magic of Woodpecker is that it's actually gonna create this questionnaire automatically for us based on the fields that were created in the templates. So in this case, I might say, this is um, client uh, intake uh, wills. Okay, and that's the name of my questionnaire. These two templates are the templates that are going to be populated or generated when this questionnaire is submitted. And then ultimately down here is my questionnaire fields, right? So each of these fields, like I said, has been generated from the template itself. And we now can say, all right, let's require none of them. Let's require all of them. Let's change the name of each one of these, for example, from client first name to your first name. Maybe we leave a little description here that says, please enter your first name. And we can essentially uh, customize these questions such that they're more client friendly. Additionally, we can section off these questions. We could say, all right, well, this is the actual personal information section. And that's going to get grouped separately for us when the, ultimately the client sees this questionnaire. Now, once the questionnaire is built, there's two ways we can actually share it. One is DocuSign style, right? So I could send my client a one-time secure link via email to, for access to this questionnaire such that they can fill it out once. The other way is that I can actually share an evergreen link to this questionnaire by putting it on my website. I could email it to folks. I could use it however I want, but it allows for multiple submissions. Before I pop out of this, any questions on the questionnaire, Bob? Is the, is the questionnaire also capable of using uh, conditional uh, logic in, in setting up the questions? Exactly, yeah. So the way that it works is that if I create a conditional field in my template, if that condition, if that conditional field um, depends on, let's say, um, the client state. Mm -hmm. All I need to do in the questionnaire is specify the client state and that conditional field is going to get evaluated behind the scenes. All right. So we actually won't see it in the questionnaire because it doesn't require input. Now, we can also set up conditional fields such that they conditionally prompt someone for an answer. For example, I might say marital status. And if the marital status is married, I might want to prompt for the spouse name. And so the questionnaires are smart enough to pull in that dynamic field and show it to you or not show it to you, depending on your answer to, let's say, client marital status. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So when I save this guy, it's just going to save my questionnaire and it's going to add it to the list, client intake wills. And if I open up that questionnaire in a new tab, we should see what ultimately the questionnaire will look like to a client, right? We see the name, we see the name of my firm, and then ultimately the two sections that I created, right? I created a personal information section and a regular section. So when the client fills this out, ultimately they'll click submit, and all of their data is now going to go into the Woodpecker system, it's going to generate these two documents, and me as the questionnaire creator, I'm going to get my fu those final documents emailed to me uh, th such that I can then use them however I want. We can optionally specify that the final documents should also go to the questionnaire submitter if we wanted to. All right. So now that we've created a questionnaire and we've accepted responses from that questionnaire, those responses are gonna get stored alongside each questionnaire. Now, if we click on one of these, we can see all the responses to a given questionnaire when they were submitted, and we can optionally download each one of them as a CSV. Now, you might find yourself in a situation where you send a client an intake questionnaire, they fill out their information, and then six months later, you need to generate a new document for them. And you don't wanna to have to send them the questionnaire again because you already have their information. And so what we can do is we can actually go over to this data section, which is our newest feature, that allows you to actually reuse the data that you've collected from questionnaires. So if I were to just say edit columns here, I'm gonna actually look at all the data we have for all of our clients here. And these are all me, but uh, but of course we could see that 
um, each one of these line items is a separate questionnaire submission. So let's say I wanted to generate, you know, a new set of engagement letters for all my clients. All I would have to do is select all my clients here, click on this populate templates button. And once again, we're going to see our document collection get pulled up. So all I would have to do is say, all right, generate an engagement letter for each one of these folks. So I'll click on generate. And ultimately now we've got a list of all of our clients up here at the top and their information is going to be pre-populated for us. So we could, of course, go through here. If there was a change in fee, we could adjust it. Um, if there was anything else we wanted to adjust, this is sort of just a, uh, a, a final review. Once we, once we are happy with what the data is going to look like in the final document, we can go ahead and click populate. Ultimately, now we're generating these six engagement letters for six clients behind the scenes and presenting them to us um, as a fault folder that we can actually download. That's great. Where is that data being saved and how secure is it? Great question. So our entire infrastructure is built on AWS um, in a US-based data center. Um, this data is encrypted in transit and at rest, uh, as well as associated to only your user account through a hashing mechanism, such that the only thing that can read this data is your user account um, and Woodpecker on behalf of your user account when it's generating these documents for your clients. Alex, what about uh, integrations with law practice management applications? Great question. So um, we have an integration with Zapier, which we've sort of taken the you know, kill 3,000 birds with one stone approach mm -hmm. um, because Zapier has integrations with 3,000 different applications and our customers have asked for all sorts of different things. So our, our sort of standalone or flagship integration is via Zapier, meaning that anything that is also plugged into Zapier can be plugged into Woodpecker. Um, we are exploring some additional more in-depth integrations with other legal practice management systems. And you can imagine um, the ability to have your client data from your LPMS actually pull into here and bi-directionally sync um, and be able to essentially use your client data you already have to generate documents on the fly. And how can viewers of this video find out more about Woodpecker? So you can actually visit our website, which is just woodpeckerweb.com, and you can sign up for a 14-day free trial, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to, uh, happy to show you more about Woodpecker from there. Alex, thanks so much for telling us about Woodpecker today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Bob. Appreciate it. That's it for this episode of How It Works. You can find the full series at lawsitesblog.com. This is Bob Ambrogi. Thanks so much for watching.